In this video, I'm gonna explain the best specs that you can get for a gaming PC based on your budget. Now, there's just a few things to go over before we start. And first up, if you haven't watched the Gaming PC 101 video that I've made, please go and watch that first because it'll make all my advice in this video make much more sense. Secondly, this video is made for May 2025. So if you're watching this and it's not May 2025, the chances are the information here is kind of stale, it's gonna be old and it's not reliable anymore. So make sure you're watching the most updated version of this video. Thirdly, all the specs in this video are assuming that you've got a Zenith tower case with an air cooler. We can build any PC you like in any kind of style, but the Zenith PC is one of the cheapest options that still looks amazing with great airflow. So that's the default case I'm gonna use for these specs. Just bear that in mind when I'm giving you the advice. Now, if you want a bit of a ballpark of what you can expect to spend with different styles, I would say you can expect to spend about 100 or more extra if you wanna go for the Sojourn, Odyssey, or Eclipse kind of styles. If you wanna go for the Architect style or similar, you can normally expect to spend about $200 more for that style. And if you wanna go for a really crazy case like Height Y70, Touch Infinite, or similar, we can build any PC like that, but quite often those kind of styles do end up costing about a thousand dollars more or more the point is we build custom pcs and we'll make it suit your budget and part of that process is making sure that you like the style now next up remember that all the specs i give you advice on in this video are based on having 32 gig of ram a one terabyte nvme ssd a reliable motherboard a suitable power supply and a full set of fans for your case now i have turned off comments for this video and it's because i don't have enough time to go back through all the different versions of this video and reply to all the comments we're going to keep uploading a new version of this advice as often as possible and I don't have enough time to go back through and reply to all of you. So comments are off on this video specifically. Now, if you're not sure if you can trust my advice, that's okay, but I do recommend you get onto Google or Google Maps and just search Cataclysm Computers. Click on the Google Business Profile. You'll be able to see all the reviews there. Check out some of those. There's a lot of information and photos and you'll see some words from people that are loving their Cataclysm PC. Now, first up, we've got the ultra budget segment, which is $1,300 to $1,500. Now, just a quick preface here. I actually don't recommend that anyone spends less than $1,300 on a brand new PC because two things usually happen. Firstly, the parts in there are not gonna be very powerful and you're gonna wanna upgrade pretty quickly. And secondly, you're not gonna be able to upgrade because the parts in those PCs for about $1,000 are pretty low quality and you do kind of bottleneck yourself. You're not gonna be able to upgrade it to anything decent later. So instead, if you need to spend less than $1,300, I recommend you get a second-hand PC. And I do have a second-hand PC guide. If you filled out the custom PC page with a budget under $1,300, you'll see that guide. Now, if you wanna spend $1,300 to $1,500 on your PC, there's really just two processes to look at. And they're really similar. And they're actually about $50 apart. So most of the time, I'll go for the more powerful one. You've got the Ryzen 5 5500 and the Ryzen 5 5600. They're very similar, but the 5600 is about 20% faster. Both of those processes will let you run any game you like at at least 60 FPS, but most games are going to run at 120 plus anyway. And if you play games like Valorant or Counter-Strike 2, you can expect two, three, 400 FPS, depending on the map and the settings that you've got. Now for the graphics card, I just straight up recommend that you get the AMD RX 6600. That's a great graphics card. And you can expect to run any game you like smoothly at at least 60 FPS, but 120 plus is very, very easy. Most games like Valorant and Counter-Strike, just like I said for the processors, you can get two or three or even 400 FPS, depending on your settings and the map. Now, I definitely recommend that you stick to 1080p for this budget. Don't go to 1440p or you will get much lower FPS. The next segment is $1,500 to $2,000. Now this segment is really interesting because I do actually recommend an Intel processor here and it's the only time in this whole list that I'm gonna recommend one. It's not that I love AMD, it's just that if you look at these budgets at the minute, AMD's got much better options and you definitely get better future upgrade options. So for this budget, the three processors that I recommend would be a Core i5-12400F or the Ryzen 5 5600. They're about the same level of performance and they're both about the same price. Usually the AMD one's about 40 or $50 more expensive, but you do get more future upgrade options with the Ryzen 7 5700X 3D. If you get the Core i5, you will spend a little bit less and performance is about the same, but usually within this price segment, you don't wanna overspend on the motherboard. So you're not gonna be able to drop in a Core i9 later because those processors need a pretty expensive board to run well. Now, the third processor that I recommend is more for the 1800 plus kind of budget is a Ryzen 5 7600. Now I know I see this processor in quite a lot of PCs for about $1,500, but that's a really powerful processor it's actually more powerful than the name would suggest. So you don't want to pair that with a cheap graphics card. You do want to make sure your graphics card is powerful enough for that processor. So if you're spending less than 1800, I'd go for the Ryzen 5 5600 or the Core i5. And anything about 1800 plus, I'm going to recommend the Ryzen 5 7600. As an added bonus, the 7600 is on the current newest AMD platform. So you've got all those future upgrade options later if you want to get a lot more FPS. Now in terms of graphics card at the 1500 to 2000 budget, there's really only two that I'd recommend and neither of them are AMD. So AMD does not have good graphics card options for PCs below about $2,000 in Australia specifically. In America, you can get the RX 7600 XT and it's a really good price. 
in Australia, it's not a good price. So the two graphics cards I would recommend are the RTX 4060 or the RTX 4060 Ti. Now the RTX 5060 Ti did just come out and sometimes it fits at that higher end just below $2,000, but most of the time if you get the SSD, etc., that you like, you're gonna end up spending about $2,200. So I don't really put it into the 1500 to two grand category, although you can do it. It's just not very common to fit that 5060 Ti in there. For the 1500 to $2,000 budget segment, I generally recommend that you stick to a 1080p monitor, but since these 40 series NVIDIA graphics cards let you use frame generation, I'm pretty happy to recommend a 1440p monitor if you're not trying to get the highest possible FPS. Next up is the 2000 to $2,500 budget range. Now in this range, it's really simple. I just recommend you get a Ryzen 5 7600 for a few basic reasons. Firstly, if you get a Core i5, you're gonna find that you have to spend more on the motherboard, otherwise you can't upgrade later to anything like a Core i7 or Core i9. You'll also find that per dollar, the Ryzen 5 7600 is the best processor out there for performance. And if you do get the Ryzen 5 today, you've got all those future upgrade options of a 7800X 3D or 9800X 3D Ryzen 7 later and it will fit the same motherboard. So just get the Ryzen 5 7600 at this budget segment and you'll play whatever you like with high FPS. Now there's actually four graphics cards that I recommend in this budget. They're all really good and the one that you get is gonna depend on exactly how much you end up spending. Now the three NVIDIA graphics cards I would recommend are the RTX 5060 Ti, the RTX 4070 and the RTX 5070. Now I don't recommend the RTX 4070 Super anymore because it actually costs a little bit more than an RTX 5070 and it is slower all around. The only time you'd buy that graphics card is if you wanna play a specific game that does run better on a 4070 Super due to the old NVIDIA physics engine. If you haven't heard of that stuff before, it's probably not relevant to you. Now, the AMD graphics card that I'd recommend here is the AMD RX 7800 XT. It's a 16 gig graphics card. And the reason it's so good and it's kind of the MVP of this price range is because you pay about the same price as an RTX 5060 Ti, but you get similar performance to the RTX 4070. All four of those graphics cards are great. You'll find that the 5060 Ti is more than enough for running 1440p. In fact, all the graphics cards are great for 1440p. And it's often about a $200 price jump to the RTX 4070 and then another $200 price jump from the 4070 to the 5070 and the 7800 XT is just about $50 more than an RTX 5060 Ti. So as you can imagine, if you're going to stick to that Ryzen 5 7600, these graphics cards are going to kind of slot in at different places all over the budget, maybe 2100, 2300 and 2500, but it's going to come down to the kind of games that you want to run and whether you need Nvidia or AMD. Most of the time it really doesn't matter and both AMD and Nvidia have their own version of frame generation, so I wouldn't worry too much. Just get whatever fits into the budget as the best deal at the time. For this $2,000 to $2,500 budget range, I really do recommend you get a 1440p monitor because these graphics cards are too good for 1080p to put it bluntly. And I don't recommend a 4K monitor to most people because you will get quite a lot lower FPS and I don't think it looks that much better than 1440p personally. Now the next segment is $2,500 to $3,000. Now within this segment, it's really similar to the $2,000 to $2,500 segment with two changes. So there's a new processor here. We've got the Ryzen 5 7600 like before, and then we're gonna introduce the Ryzen 7 7800X3D. Now, like I said previously, that Ryzen 5 7600 is a great processor that will get you great FPS today, but you can upgrade it later and get something like a Ryzen 7 7800X3D, which is also in this list. And for four or $500 more, depending on when you get the PC, the Ryzen 7 7800X3D is quite a lot more powerful, and it's actually the second fastest processor you can buy for gaming right now. So that means this budget segment is is pretty much the same as the previous segment, except if you spend four or 500 more on the processor, you end up with the same graphics card and better processor performance. Now, if it fits within your budget, I do recommend that you get the Ryzen 7 7800X 3D because it is well worth the money. It's one of the best processors you can buy right now. The only thing that beats it is the Ryzen 7 9800X 3D for about $200 more, but that 7800X 3D suits any graphics card all the way up to an RTX 5090. Now there's five graphics cards I would recommend within this budget segment, and they are the same as before with one added card. Got the RTX 5060 Ti, and then for about 200 more, you get the RTX 4070, and then for about $200 more again, you can get the RTX 5070. And there's two AMD graphics cards this time. You've got the AMD RX 7800 XT, which is a great graphics card even at this budget. And the other card I'd recommend is an RX 9070 XT. I would skip the RX 9070 because in Australia, there's only about $100 between them, and the XT is quite a lot more powerful. And overall, the RX 9070 XT is the best graphics card in this list for gaming. Now, it's usually a bit of a squeeze to get the Ryzen 7 7800 X3D with the RX 9070 XT in this price range to stay under $3,000, but it is doable. But that's the reason why I've got all those options there for you. You might wanna go for a processor heavy or a graphics card heavy build, and that's gonna change the combo that you get. For the $2,500 to $3,000 budget range, I still recommend that you stick to a 1440p monitor, but those higher end graphics cards, especially when you've got frame generation running, will allow you to run 4K if you really want to. Just stay away from the 1080p monitors because you just don't need to get 1080p 
at this budget with these kind of graphics cards, you can definitely do better. Now the next segment is $3,000 to $3,500. Now this is a really easy segment because once you get here, the processor advice is really simple. You wanna get the Ryzen 7 7800X 3D or the Ryzen 7 9800X 3D. The reason that's even an option is that for me personally, I would just get the 7800X 3D. Like I said previously, that 7800X 3D suits anything up to an RTX 5090 in terms of the graphics cards. And the 9800X 3D may be more powerful, but if you're getting 500 FPS already, why do you need to spend more to get 550 FPS? Most of the time, it doesn't make any sense. But if you just wanna get the best of the best, it's pretty often only $150 to go from the 7800X 3D to the 9800X 3D. So there are your two processor choices. Now, in terms of graphics cards, this is obviously gonna depend on what processor you get, but I would get the RTX 5070 or the 5070 Ti or the RX 9070 XT. All three of those graphics cards are amazing. And the 9070 XT is generally just under that 5070 Ti but it costs only about $100 more than the RTX 5070. So if we've got them in stock, I do mostly recommend that you get the 9070 XT unless you really need some specific features that NVIDIA graphics cards have. For the $3,000 to $3,500 budget, I do recommend you stick to 1440p again. As always, 4K doesn't really look that much better than 1440p. It's not really worth the money and you shouldn't be using 1080p for a PC that's this powerful. Now, the next segment is 3,500 to 4,200. This is a really easy segment. The processor advice is exactly the same as before. Just get the Ryzen 7 7800X 3D or the 9800X 3D. And if you're on a specific budget and getting the 7800X 3D means you can upgrade to a better graphics card within your budget, just do that. The two graphics cards I would recommend are the RTX 5070 Ti or the RTX 5080. You're gonna start seeing those RTX 5080s pop up at about $4,000 or more. It's pretty hard to get a good, well-balanced PC with a 5080 in it for less than $4,000 in Australia. If you do find one, it's normally got some kind of motherboard that you don't really want or a power supply that doesn't suit. So generally about 4,000 or more for the 5080 PCs. But if you do need to save some money, just bear in mind that 5070 Ti is actually a really good graphics card. It's really similar to the 5080 because it's built with the same chip. That's why they're both 16 gig. And since you're probably gonna use frame generation anyway, that 5070 Ti is a beast of a graphics card. Now my monitor recommendation for the 3,500 to $4,200 budget would be 1440p as always, but you can definitely run 4K and still get amazing FPS. You do just lose FPS compared to 1440p. So if you're gonna play some fast paced shooters and that kind of thing, stick to 1440p and maybe get 240 or 360 hertz. But if you wanna play some single player games or you don't care that much about the craziest FPS, go and get a 4K monitor because you're gonna love it. The last budget segment on this list is extremely broad and it's just very easy to understand. Basically, once you get past that $4,200 mark, you're gonna get a 5080 anyway or a 5090. Now the 5090s are really expensive worldwide. In Australia, you can expect to spend about six and a half thousand for just a 5090 graphics card. So as you can imagine, you can't fit that into a $4,000 PC budget. You generally end up spending about eight and a half thousand or more for those 5090 PCs. So if you're not gonna spend about eight and a half grand or more, I'm gonna recommend that you stick to an RTX 5080, which is already an amazing graphics card anyway. At the $4,200 plus budget range, you're completely fine to get whatever monitor you want. I do, of course, recommend 1440p again, because I really like the high FPS, but with a 5080 or a 5090, you've got no problem running 4K if you really want to. Just choose whatever suits the kind of game play style that you've got. If you think I've missed anything from this video and something doesn't make sense, please just let me know. But the advice is really simple. I'm trying to give you advice so that you get the best FPS for your money. Bear in mind, like I said at the start, the case style or the style in general that you choose is gonna determine what fits into the rest of your budget. And if you're ready for a PC right now, don't forget to follow the steps in the text or email that you got and we'll help you out with a custom PC.